Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope you all are doing well. Today I'll show you how you can use Postgres locally using Docker and Python. We're also going to spin up a web UI that you can use to interact with your Postgres database. We are essentially going to be writing two files. One's going to be the Docker Compose file where you define your Docker containers. And then we're going to have a demo.py file, which is going to be your Python file that you use to query your data. So at first, we're going to look at the Docker Compose file where we are going to be defining two services. One's going to be called database. Another is going to be called adminer. For the database service, the image is going to be Postgres. And the ports are going to be 5432 mapped to 5432. All right, the restart policy is going to be always. And then we need to give it a few environment variables. Namely, we need to give it our user, which in this case, we're going to call Docker. We need to give it a password. We are also going to call it Docker. And then we need to give uh, our database a name. We're going to call it example DB. That's all you need to spin up the Postgres service. And then adminer, which is gonna be our web UI, is gonna be from an image called adminer. The restart policy is gonna be always again. We are gonna make this a dependent of our database service. This is to make sure the adminer container only spins up once the database is already up and running. And then we're gonna define our ports. In this case, it's gonna be 8080 mapped to 8080. That's all you need. So essentially we have a database service, which is gonna be our Postgres database. We define a user password and DB name. And then we have another service called adminer, which is gonna be the web UI that you use to query the database. And because of that, we make adminer a dependent of database so that adminer spins up only when the database is already up and running. All right, so now that the file is done, all you have to do is run docker compose up dash D. This is gonna spin it up. So you already see it created the network and it created both the containers. If you go to the Docker UI, you can also see that. So you can see we have Postgres Python running, which is uh, technically the container that we just spun up. All right, so with that running, let's take a look at the web UI to see how that looks and works. So over here, we're gonna go to localhost 8080. There you go, that's your web UI. I'm gonna zoom in. And uh, the system in our case is gonna be Postgres. The service is gonna be the name of your service over here. Uh, that's gonna be database. So the server is gonna be database. Your username is gonna be Docker, which is the username you put over here. Password is gonna be Docker too. And the name of the database is gonna be example DB. So these three are gonna be whatever you put over here. We're gonna to try to log in and there you go. So right now you have no tables, but you can see you have a web UI to work with. You can go ahead and create a table over here. That is what we're gonna do. If you hit create table, they tell you to give a table name. Let's give it student. A column name, let's say we give an ID, which is going to be an integer, and this is going to be auto incrementing. And then we give it a name, which is going to be, uh, let's just go to strings. We can give it, is there a text? Let's see. Uh, so we have character text. Yeah, let's give it a text. And then let's say we have age, which is another number. Mm, and yeah, I think that should be all. So let's save it. And 
and you can see we do have select student right so if you go to public which is your database you see all the tables over here and you do see the student table if we look at the student table we can go and do select data and you can see we don't have any rows so let's work on inserting the rows in this table and that's where the python code is going to come in so what we're going to do is go back to our editor and demo.py the only package you need is called uh i don't know how to say it it's p s y c o p g2 this is the package that you'll be uh installing so you can essentially do a pip3 install and that should just install it for you uh, i already have it installed so i'm not going to install it again so the first thing you need is you connect to an existing database to do that you have a variable con and you assign it to the connect method you give it a database in our case it's going to be example db you give it a user in our case it's going to be docker and you give it a password in our case it's going to be docker again so these three are essentially your uh, configs from here right so these three are the configs from here and then you need to give it a host so we have this running locally so our host is going to be 0.0.0.0, .0, .0, .0. All right, so this should set up the connection. And now you need to open something called a cursor to perform the database operations. So all you're going to do is do a con.cursor. This is going to give you a reference to the cursor object. And then you can start querying your database immediately. So let's do cur.execute that's the command you use to execute anything let's do a select star from student all right so this is going to return to you the rows of data uh, so you're going to store them so you can do cursor.fetch all this is going to store all the rows in uh, the rows variable and then you can iterate through them and then print out the row and once it's done, you just close the communication. This is to make sure everything is closed once you're done using it. So you close the cursor at first, and then you close the connection. All right, so let's go ahead and run this. We are going to do a Python 3 demo.py. Uh, print row, yeah. So if, uh, let's just do it here. So let's do if length rows. So if there are no rows, let's go ahead and print out empty. Right, and otherwise, let's go ahead and print out the rows. There you go. So you see we're getting empty. That's because we don't have any rows. Now let's go back to the web UI. And then let's insert uh, some data. Uh, so let's see how you can insert data. Uh, so new item, if you hit new item, you can give it the ID. In our case, it's auto incrementing, so we don't really care. The name is gonna be, let's go with my name, which is gonna be Urtiza. And then the age, let's go with 25. We do a save. And you can see in our database, we have ID1, name your teaser, H25. Now, if we go to our Python code and run it again, you see we're getting a tuple, which is the ID, the name, and the age. Similarly, let's go ahead and add another item. So we don't need to give an ID because it's auto incrementing. Let's give it Bob and let's give 30. And let's put another called Mike. Uh, and let's give him 20. And finally, another called Alice, which is gonna be, let's say, 35. All right, so now let's go back to our student table. You can see we have four rows with ID 1, 2, 3, and 4. If we go to our Python code and run it again, 
you see we get all four over here right so that's how you can query the postgres running locally using python and if you don't want to use the code you can easily run any queries you want over here so right now you're using a select star query but if you wanted to you could essentially write anything here so you could do select star from student let's do where id uh put it all caps id equals three and if you run it you're only getting one row. If you do something, I don't know if this is Postgres syntax, but ID one, two, three, you are getting three rows over here. So the uh, UI is very straightforward and very easy for you to look at your existing data. You can also take a look at other information related to your table. And within the table, of course, you can look at your data itself, which is very handy. And if you want to do it through the Python code, you can do that too over here. Uh, we went ahead and saw how you can read the data. However, you can also insert the data in a very similar way. We can go ahead and try inserting a data. So uh, let's say at, before querying, we do some insert, right? And then over here, what we could essentially do, I think, is we could do execute, and then we could do insert into student. Uh, we don't need the ID, we need the name and the age. And then we do values, and then the values is gonna be, let's do a Trevor and age 40. Let's see actually if that works. Uh, yeah, over here you saw after we uh, wrote the row, we read everything and we did get Trevor H40 ID 5 uh, So yeah, it's pretty straightforward to write and read using Python And if you don't want to do it through code, you can do it through the UI, which is also handy So to recap We have a docker compose file where we are defining two services One is our database, which is a Postgres image we give it our own user password and DB. And then we have an adminner instance running, which is the web UI you use to query your database. For the web UI, you just go to localhost 8080 and then sign in. Once you sign in, you can take a look at all your databases over here. If you go to our example DB, you can look at all the tables we have. And then within the table, if you do a select data, you can see all your data here. You can go to edit and go and execute whatever query that you have in mind. If you want to do it through code, you can do it easily in Python. So what just happened here? Uh, all right. Anyways, I'll come back to that. There you go. So uh, if you want to do it through Python, all you need is the package over here. You establish a connection you instantiate a cursor and then with that cursor you can execute either write statements or read statements and then you can read them out just using a for loop just make sure once you're done you close both the cursor and the connection so that you don't have any memory leak or anything that you have to worry about so hopefully that was helpful let me know if you have any questions and you can just leave them in the comments and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. With that being said, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.